Good day, Martin here, True North Ministry. Welcome with me. And um, yes, if you have your Bible, you may turn with me to Psalm 133, verse 1. Um, I just want to speak to you on true unity. True unity. What I believe it's all about, and I believe it's going to bless you as always. So, Psalm 133, verse 1. It says, yeah, how good and how pleasant. Now that pleasant in Hebrew is also uh, sweet. And um, it is when brothers live together in unity. How good and how pleasant or sweet is it when brothers live in unity. In unity. Now, I must uh, explain to you and help you to understand what unity means and it's all about according to Christ and Jesus in His Word. So, unity, if we go and look what we think of unity, it means a unit. And the basis of that word means one. So, I'm going to write it there, one. All right. One. And I'm going to draw to you a, a circle. It is one circle. All right. I'm going to explain to you how we must see things for us to live by. So, how good and how pleasant and sweet it is when brothers. All right. So, I want you to see that brothers live together, together in unity all right so brothers means there's two or more all right two or more very important to see that two and more live in unity in oneness with each other it's good for you it will be a blessing for you now remember yesterday i spoke on um the bible uh, i said to uh, the theme was perfectly joined together. I said that the church needs to understand this. We must not be alone. We are not islands living alone and we must minister alone. I believe the church must come together because there is a blessing and the power and the authority that the church combined has that one ministry and one minister does not have so god wants us to bring in this time the church together so we must pray for this we must help the church we must help cap uh, couples we must help um um you know families we must help churches we must have help companies whatever to come together in unity because it is good and it will be sweet and pleasant when brothers live in unity, in oneness. All right, understand that. Now that unity in this Hebrew word means likewise, like manner, likewise manner. All right, another word. So likewise, we are all likewise, in like manner, one manner. We are all like the same manner. All right. Unity. It means one. But we must understand that because I'm speaking of true unity. All right. Now I want you to go to John 17, verse 22 and 23. John 17, verse 22 and 23. Listen what John says yet yeah, jesus prayed this was the most important prayer and this was the prayer of the lord jesus christ all right the most important words that i believe that is in the bible is this according to me and i believe that the holy spirit laid it on my heart there's no better and greater words than this listen John 17, verse 22 and 23, Jesus prayed to the Father and He says, 
I have given them the glory that you gave me. It is everything together. I gave them the glory that you have given me, that they may be one as we are one. I want you to see that this. I give them the glory. All right. Jesus is the one that gives the glory. So it can be possible to be one because Jesus gives the glory, the light, His power, His grace, His awesomeness for men to be one. But we need to understand that unity. All right? That they may be one. They, as many, may be one. All right? As we are one. All right? So Jesus says, Father, me and you, it's two, are one. I give them the glory so that they can be one. Unity means oneness. But, listen here. I in them. I in them and you in me. So let's see this. All right, it's one, I in them, many, and you, Father, in me. I, Jesus, in them, and you in me. All right, see this, because we say one, unity is oneness, but we are more. We are they and we. So we are a lot of people that needs to be one. Like Jesus is praying and say, Father, me in them and you are in me. I want you to see this, what means unity. All right. I and them and you and me. May they brought to complete complete unity to let the world know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Alright? May they be brought to complete unity. So, the most important focus of Jesus Christ and God to mankind was unity. And that unity was a unity with Him. You cannot be united or one with nobody if you are not first of all united with Him. Having then His glory to be united with Him. It's impossible to truly be one with one with someone else if you have not the glory of God. Alright. But that one and unity we need to understand. Alright. Listen to Colossians 3 verse 14. And over all these virtues. I have spoken now to you. Paul is saying to the Colossians. And all, over all these virtues. These good awesome things that I spoken of. Put on love. Which binds them all together in perfect unity. All right. Love. Put on love that binds all these things in perfect unity. All these things means it's many. Many. Remember yesterday when I said um, perfectly, God says we must be perfectly joined together. The five things, it's so important for him. Then he says, devote yourself to brotherly love. Then the third was, um, he says, sharing with each other. How important is sharing? Sharing, it's God's will. Sharing. And then the fourth is where God says, he is focused on many brothers. 
So we must focus on many, many brothers, many, plural, more than one. All right, I want you to see something. And then two is better than one. You remember? Go and listen to that um, awesome um, uh, message about God's plan for mankind and how we miss the blessings of God because we do not know the perfectly joined together and how it works. God wants us to be perfectly joined together. Now listen, Colossians 3 verse 14 says, And over all these things that are spoken of, it's so important, put on love. So first of all, you need glory. I give them the glory so, they, so that they can become one. Put on love. Put on love which binds them all. You hear the plural word? Together in perfectly unity. It binds them in perfectly union. union unity. Alright. That was Colossians 3 verse 14. So I had three scriptures as, so far. That unity, when God speaks of unity, in basis, it means oneness. Alright? And God made him one with mankind. And it is his heart to be one with mankind. And he wants men to be one with him. It's impossible to be in unity if God is not within you. Jesus in them and we uh, and the Father in us. Now, I said so many times the plural word. We, they, many, more than one. And you have heard it in my scripture, so I said that. Now, unity means, yeah, one means unity. But here is another person. Alright? And he needs to be one with Jesus and the Father. Alright? Then you get another person that is one with God the Father. This is true unity. This is true unity. With Jesus in you and the Father in him. Because that was his, his prayer. Now God pray and says, let them be one. Now, a unit, we must understand, I want you to focus on a unit like this. Here is a one thing, unit means one, and then like a puzzle piece, it is like something like that. All right, um, how can I do it like this? So one, but it has puzzle pieces, different puzzle pieces fitting together as being one. But this one does not look the same as that one. But this one has Jesus in them and the Father in Jesus. And Jesus in, you understand? So a unit can be a lot of parts. But it needed to be fitted for one unit, to be one. We, here yeah, unity, we all must be one, is thinking and doing and looking and speaking and feeling exactly the same. We all look like this, like this. But it is not really that we look all the same like that. In individually, we look for God because the Father and the Son Jesus is in us. Look, we look the same. But we are we and many and they. And this can look a little bit different, more like this. 
Why do I say this? Because we need to understand Jesus Christ says, I have a body. And one is an eye, one is a finger. All right? The finger is part of the body, but the finger has another function and does not look like the eye. But the eye cannot tell the finger, I do not need you. The finger has purpose and other knowledge that he needs to do than the eye. All right? But as long as the finger is one with Jesus and the Father and does what he needs to do and is part of the one body, he is in unit, in unity with each other. So that's, he does not need to speak and think and say and do exactly the same way what the eye is doing. All right? So unity in God's eye. Understand this, that God knows this. It's more than one. And it looks different. And there is differences. Because they and we and thou are many. But they, we are many, are individuals. And all of them must have God and Jesus Christ individually in them. But when they come together, they have a unity. I help you and you help me. But maybe my ministry and my way of doing things is a little bit different than you, but I'm still in unity with you. I minister on this, you minister on that. And both, we are the same spirit of Christ. We are coming together and we are united. We are united. I need you as the mouth. You need me as the ear. You understand what I'm saying? So, another scripture that I said yesterday is this. Proverbs 27 verse 17. It says, Iron sharpens iron. Easter slight Easter. So man sharpens the countenance of his friends. You will sharpen the countenance of your friend. So, it is almost like this. It's like a, um, a gear. You know? I think it is a gear. And in Afrikaans we say ratte. It looks like this. This is tooth. This tooth must fit into there. And that tooth must fit into there. It's gears running like this. Alright? Then they are in unity. They working together. But they can have different purposes. They can speak a little bit. Because maybe this gear is connected to a lever. Yeah, that needs to be released. And this gear has something to do with an uh, opening of a, uh, a funnel for water to come through. But all of them, they, we and many, are in one, working with the same mind and same purpose to something, being in unity. So now the Bible says, in iron sharpens iron. So sometimes that friend of mine, I need him not to be exactly the same as me. He needs to sharpen me and speak to me in a way and help me out of brotherly love to get me right because we must be in a unity. It sharpens and the, the countenance of his friend. That means it is a unit that working, but there is also a difference. There is also a thing of it is not one. So unity in Christ means one, but do not leave out the, the many and the few and the we and the they and the differences 
in that. All right? We think when people must come together, we must be united. We must speak the same thing here. But I believe when I am united with God, His Spirit is within me, and my focus is love. I have His glory. I can be united with you, although you differ from me in ministry, in ways you see things, and I do not judge you. I can be united and be one with you in spirit. Because we bind love, we took love, and we bind ourselves together. I have a porridge that I eat. Um, it's future life. My mom says she loves it when it has this little clonter, you know. Um, I said, no, I don't like that. I hate it. I, mine must be smooth. But I love my mom and my mom loves me. And we are like this. And we, we do not judge each other. I just said to her, no, I don't like it that way. And she says, no, I don't want I love it. So we can be different. There can, uh, you know, be, we are not the same. But in no way, in my heart, that I felt anything against her or she against me. Because it is how she is. She loves it. And I don't love it. But we can be one. And then we would take our coffee and go and sit and drink. And that was the thing. Because love bound, binds us together. Although there's many things that this man and that man will not agree with. But that does not mean we are not in unity. Because our unity comes from God and love. And because our unity is from the glory and we take on love, we can sit with each other and we can be working with each other in a big body with different functions and different things and different knowledges. We can work together as a unit. So when Jesus speaks of we must be united, it speaks of this unit. It must not, it does not mean the church must, all the churches must look the same. And all the men must look the same. And we must all think alike. It is more, the, it is more like like manner. How good and how pleasant it is when brothers live in unity in unity because we are many coming together with the spirit of god and everyone gives his way and his part in the body of christ and we put on love and i can see you and i do not judge you and you see me the differences and you do not judge me and then we work together for a specific thing and that is unity that means oneness with the differences inside all right i hope you understand that not all men will be always like you but give place for men when they are different but that does not mean there is no unity all right that does not mean you are not united or joined together because, friends, there is a time when iron sharps iron and it is friends that sharpens you. There is a difference. All right. So unity does not mean there is no difference or variety. There is many varieties in the Lord Jesus Christ and in his kingdom. God is a many-membered man. I hope you understand. May God bless you. I say a lot of times, I hope you understand. <laughs> so you must understand. My Jesus bless you. Amen. Hey guys, the Mill Venomon here from True North Ministries. Don't forget to like and subscribe and comment down below. And also go follow our Instagram page. Link is in the description. Thank you. Blessings. Amen.